What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be rebuilding the Weber carburetor on my Mazda B2000. I had mentioned before I was having some troubles with it, mainly with the idling and everything. And I just think it's time to rebuild it just because you can tell by looking at mine that you had some fuel spillage and everything. Like I said, we're having some issues with it. So I think it's better if we just start off from scratch. And let me just show you here really quick. There is my carburetor. Uh, you can see we got some fuel markings here on this side. I mean, some of these gaskets look a little all super soaked in fuel as well. So I think it'll just be a great opportunity to basically tear this apart, clean everything that needs to be cleaned inside of it, put it back together, and hopefully we're going to be running with a fresh new unit in here. Um, there's really nothing else changing here. We do have a new little oil cap here. I'll link you guys on that one too if you, wanna, you guys want to pick that up. But we are going to go ahead and rebuild this with the Weber tune-up kit that Redline sells for this particular carburetor. I have done in the past the rebuild with the Amazon kit, one of those generic kits, and there's honestly nothing wrong with those kits. It worked great. My carburetor felt fine when I rebuilt that one on the Mazda B2200, but I wanted to go with a bit better quality parts on this one since I do plan to keep this truck long term and I would like to not have to redo this uh, anytime soon again. So let me show you here on the table basically what we're working with today. And then here on the table we have the Redline 92.3237.05 kit. This is the tune-up kit for the 3236 uh, carburetors. And this does not come, you have to buy this separately too. This is just the gasket kit for the same carburetor. This is going to be between your plates and this is to actually rebuild it. It comes with a nice set of instructions here, so hopefully we are going to get this done nice and uh, clean. And I can say just from having bought the Amazon kit previously, the Amazon kit does come with some cheaper gaskets. These gaskets are definitely better quality, but the Amazon kit does come with a few more things, which if something like that is broken on your carburetor, it might be uh, a little bit better to go with that kit potentially and just make your own gaskets or um, just it's nice to have a couple extra parts. And what do I mean by extra parts? Uh, they come with a nice little ruler. They come with some extra bolts. Uh, a lot of them have this little diaphragm and stuff in there. Uh, a little fuel filter if you want to add one in between your fuel pump and your carburetor. And a few other things. I don't have, obviously, an Amazon kit right now because I didn't buy one this time. But like I said, it's just a little nicer that some of these other parts get included should you have to replace that on yours. So we are going to be using this today. I'm excited to get this out of the truck and get it rebuilt again. Hopefully it's going to be working nice and in tip top shape. So let's get to go ahead and remove mine right now and let's get to work. Alright guys, so here we have my carburetor off the truck and one of the few things obviously like I said just very dirty I don't want to tell this too much because there's still some fuel right here in the bowl But very dirty you can see it might have had maybe some slight fuel leaks Along the side here uh, nothing major to cause concern but enough that it actually built up some dirt in there So once we start rebuilding this we're gonna get rid of that. We'll make sure we're gonna clean all of that so it's nice and shiny. One thing I do wanna say though, if you guys are following the method that I'm gonna link on the bottom for the how to rebuild, what I noticed when I rebuilt my last one was that a lot of these yellow pieces, this kind of plating that they have, I guess, comes off if you use the solution that they recommend. So it might just look silver once you finish rebuilding this. It's not a concern for me, but something to uh, let you know if you're gonna do this. So. Outside of that though, this, uh, again, besides being dirty, just gonna be rebuilt. But one thing I can tell you that when I was taking my plates off, I noticed was that, especially this plate here, it was already kind of loose. Uh, three of the bolts were kind of loose, the other one was actually tightened. So that already tells me that some of my vacuum leaks most likely were due to this plate not being tightened up enough. I don't know if the vibrations of the engine started backing up the bolts or something. Uh, but I will have to double check on that. Also, one of these little bolts down here was a little bit too far down. Um, if you can see kind of here, it was just a little bit too far down. So that will also create um, some of that vacuum leak again because it's not going to be flush flat with the other bracket. So 
Always be aware of that if you're putting that in there, make sure this is not sticking down, make sure this is flat. Again, you might have to sand it down to make sure it's fully flat because they don't come fully flat from factory. I know it's crazy, but um, yeah, just give it a nice sanding on the top, nice sanding on the bottom, make sure it's nice and flat. Make sure this one's nice and flat. Uh, this one's also a little bit dirty all around. So we're gonna clean all of that hopefully here in a few minutes um, just to get this put back together. All right guys, so we have basically torn everything apart. We have our water here with some pine salt or Fabuloso. I'm pretty sure it's the same thing. I'm using Fabuloso on mine, but we are gonna go ahead and use an old toothbrush and start wiping and cleaning some of that fuel and grime and all that in there. And then we're gonna go ahead and make sure we rinse this with just water and dry it out, blow some air through uh, all the little spots that things can get in here, make sure everything's nice and dry and then start putting it back together. Again, the video I'm using to undo this and put everything back together is gonna be down in the description. Check it out. He did a great job in explaining everything uh, that I'm doing here uh, that honestly, I don't think there's a need for me to do a, a, a video doing basically the same thing. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and start cleaning here and get to work with putting everything back together. And after a little while, the carburetor has been rebuilt. Let's hope I put everything right back how it's supposed to be. Uh, again, the video does a pretty good job of explaining all of this. Uh, there are some stuff that they don't explain like this part because he is using a manual choke and we have a electronic one. And honestly, there's really not a lot to do here. All you gotta do is remove this part, uh, change the little plastic tab here that comes with the kit, uh, add the little gasket that comes also with the kit. And I think you should be pretty much good to go on that part. Uh, I wouldn't take any of this off. There's no reason to do it. And then uh, once you get everything here adjusted and everything back together, you should be pretty much good to take this and add it to the truck now. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move over there. Let's start putting this back in place. Like I said, let's hope I did everything right. And then we're just gonna have to go ahead and move on to tuning and try to set this properly um, so that it can idle properly, it can run properly and everything inside of our truck. So let's take it over there. All right, we pretty much done everything I did earlier and put it back in here in place. Now it's gonna come the hardest part about rebuilding the carburetor and that is to tune it to make sure it's running properly. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put my air filter box back in here. Everything else is supposed to be already tied up where it needs to go. We have our fuel line, we have our timing uh, vacuum here. Uh, I do need to adjust my choke here. As you can see, I have it loose so I can move it around. Uh, I do need to turn on the truck, make sure it gets up to temperature first, and then I can start tuning this part of it. Again, like I said, tuning is the hardest uh, on this thing. So let me go ahead and finish up here and then get the truck out of the garage so I can turn it on and do what I need to do. Let's do it. All right, guys, it's a little windy out here, so hopefully you hear me good. But uh, yeah, the truck is running a lot better than it was before. It doesn't want to die. It seems to keep a consistent RPM. Uh, I definitely need to mess with my electric truck just a little bit. I don't think I got in it quite right where it needs to go. Uh, but outside of that though, everything else seems to be running pretty good. The truck's warm up enough and it's running, like I said, great so far. So I think the rebuild definitely helped. There's no spills or anything like that. So we are looking good here. Uh, I think we did a pretty good job today. So uh, with that in mind, that's really all I have for you guys. So thank you so much for watching. Hopefully we'll see you guys on the next video. Go check out the channel if you watch more videos on Mazdas or Nissans and we'll catch you guys next time.